Mary Lou Retton became an inspiration to millions after winning gold at the 1984 Olympics, but her life is by no means perfect. From battling chronic pain to finding herself uninsured during a health crisis, Retton has faced multiple struggles throughout her life and career. Since birth, Mary Lou Retton has dealt with a medical condition that sentenced her to a lifetime of pain and invasive treatment. Retton was born with hip dysplasia, a malformation in which the socket of the hip joint doesn't entirely cover the ball of the femur. As a result, the hips can overextend or in some cases dislocate. Today, hip dysplasia is often medically identified in the first year of a child's life. However, Retton's condition went undiagnosed, and the years of wear and tear that she put on her body as an elite athlete didn't help. Even years after her gymnastics career ended, Retton's chronic pain remained a mystery. The condition that I grew up with not knowing I had it. I had pain in my hips and I was misdiagnosed for many years. By that point, Retton required a total replacement of both hips. The former Olympic champion had to relearn basic motor skills throughout months of intensive physical therapy. Many American children participate in sports during their elementary and high school years with hopes of making it big after graduation. However, very few get that opportunity and even fewer get it while they're still a teenager. Mary Lou Retton certainly had the talent. However, the window in which gymnasts can achieve greatness is so narrow that she was forced to choose between continuing her education or pursuing an athletic career full-time. Retton took up dance and tumbling when she was just four years old. At seven, she was starting to show promise in gymnastics school. So when famed Romanian coach Bella Caroli moved to the United States in 1981, Retton's parents made a bold decision. During her freshman year at Fairmont Senior High School, they withdrew their daughter and moved her to Houston, Texas, so that she could train with Caroli full-time. For the better part of two years leading up to the 1984 games, Retton's priority was to get stronger and learn new skills. For this reason, she enrolled in distance learning courses. There was a drawback, however, as Retton completely missed out on normal teenage experiences like going to the prom. She told Sports Illustrated in 1984, it's a trade-off. Retton went on to win five Olympic medals, but rather than graduate with her class at Fairmont, she had to earn her GED on her own time. Some of the most dramatic moments in sports history have occurred when a superstar sustains an injury and has to play or perform through the pain. That was the case for Mary Lou Retton in 1984, though not everybody in the audience or at home knew it. Just five weeks before she was set to appear in the Olympics, Retton had trouble getting up off the floor while signing autographs and suspected that she had damaged her knee. She was hoping she could ice it and continue her training, but her doctor said that surgery was her only option to repair the broken piece of cartilage. Though she was only 16 years old, Retton had been working for more than a decade toward the goal of competing on the world stage, so she was already feeling the pressure to win Olympic medals for her country. After an arthroscopic procedure successfully fixed the knee, Retton faced a three-month-long recovery process with only three weeks left until the games began. I'm just shooting for 84 right now, that's the main goal. She worked hard to get back to where she'd been before the injury, and as her Olympic record shows, Retton not only made it back to the floor ahead of schedule, she also dominated the competition. In 1984, Mary Lou Retton made history by becoming the first American woman to win a gold medal in an Olympic all-around gymnastics competition. Her first place finish made her a beloved sports celebrity at the time, and she remains an icon to many fans of the sport today. But not everyone in the world of gymnastics saw it that way. Her victory carries some controversy, largely due to the state of international politics in the 1980s. The previous Olympic Games had been held in 1980 in Moscow. The Russians dominated the 1980 Games by winning 80 gold medals. However, the United States had boycotted those games due to the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan in 1979. Those games were also very competitive as a whopping 36 world records were broken. Four years later in Los Angeles, Russia and 14 other Eastern European countries boycotted the Olympics because of perceived political hostility. That said, the Los Angeles games were seen as being more hospitable toward American athletes when it came to scoring. So without some reigning champions returning to defend their titles, fewer records were set. Retton, for example, didn't have to compete against Natalia Yurchenko, the 1983 world all-around champion. Still, the Olympic Games are the Olympic Games, and Retton is very proud of her accomplishments. She told the Washington Post, The boycott doesn't take any value away from my medal. Because of the strain on their bodies and the fact that they enter competition well before adulthood, professional female gymnasts tend to retire young. Mary Lou Retton's career was fleeting even by those standards. She was just 14 years old when she began to take the sport more seriously and was just 18 years old when she unexpectedly retired, two years before the 1988 Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. Retton had been affected by injuries, but her exit didn't necessarily have to do with any physical obstacles. After the Los Angeles Games, she competed in the 1985 American Cup, where she won all four individual events and the all-around title for the third year in a row. Her coach thought she should attempt to defend her Olympic gold, but Retton hung up her leotard at the height of her success. Her reason? 
She'd become a celebrity, and managing her schedule of appearances and autograph signings was becoming as difficult as keeping up with her training, so going out on top also helped to preserve her public image as a champion. Mary Lou Retton capitalized on her Olympic gold and turned her winning reputation as a gymnast into a second act as a spokesperson, commentator, and performer. The exposure of the Olympics, combined with her youth and enthusiasm, made her a broadly popular figure to audiences outside of the world of gymnastics. Besides appearing on the cover of the Wheaties box, Retton also signed contracts with Vidal Sassoon Hair Products, Pony Shoes, Humana Hospitals, and the National Bowling Council. Super Bowl on Saturday, a great way to learn a great sport. Retton was also a natural fit for sports broadcasting and served as an on-air talent for NBC during the 1988 Summer Olympics. It was a role she returned to for the 1996 Games in Atlanta. In addition, she regularly hosted NBC's Olympics-related special coverage and also ventured into movies and television. She made cameos in TV shows like Knott's Landing and Baywatch and in the Bill Murray comedy Scrooged. In 2018, Ratton also appeared as a cast member on the 27th season of Dancing with the Stars. Though she'll be remembered for her incredible flips and twists, she spent far more of her professional life in media and advertising. Retton's 1984 Olympic wins were a symbolic victory for the United States during the Cold War era. When then-President Ronald Reagan was photographed with the American team, the petite gymnast was front and center and wrapped under the commander-in-chief's arm. She was subsequently featured in his re-election campaign and remained active in Republican politics through at least 2004. She and fellow former gymnastics star Carrie Strug were guests at the 2004 Republican convention in New York City, during which George W. Bush was again chosen as the party's nominee. Though she was taught not to discuss politics and religion while growing up, Retton grew more comfortable talking about her faith as she got older. She was raised in a religious home, but became more involved in the church when she was raising a family of her own. She told Baptist Press, I've realized that I need to set that example in a more vocal way, in a public way, for my daughters, and part of being a Christian is getting the word out. In 1990, Retton married former college football player Shannon Kelly. The athletically gifted couple went on to have four daughters together. Retton's busy but fulfilling family life was a frequent topic in her motivational speeches. However, all that time spent on the road inspiring others was part of what eventually drove her and Kelly apart. While speaking to Baptist Press, Retton admitted that her speaking engagements and sponsorship deals put a strain on her relationship. In February of 2018, the couple divorced after 27 years of marriage. However, Retton waited until November of that year to tell the public about her divorce. Retton told People, I'm not one to air my dirty laundry, but during my time on Dancing with the Stars, I kept talking about struggles and challenges and how I lost myself and all of that. The gymnast-turned-ballroom dancer said she wanted to be transparent with her fans without appearing to bash her ex-husband. She hoped that opening up about the decision to end her long marriage might help other women in similar situations. We're moving on. We're just moving on, and it's, it's all good. Though Mary Lou Retton was one of gymnastics' brightest stars, her legacy was tarnished by her stance during the sexual abuse scandal that rocked the sport. Beginning in 2014, women treated by Team USA Dr. Larry Nasser began coming forward with allegations that he touched them inappropriately during physical examinations. In the years that followed, hundreds of victims provided statements against Nasser. Nasser eventually lost his job at Michigan State University as well as his medical license. He is currently serving a lengthy prison sentence. However, his accusers weren't satisfied, believing that a systematic problem had not been solved. They suspected that people within the sport knew about the abuse and could have stopped it sooner. They were right. As it turned out, there were 54 complaints on file with USA Gymnastics. With the victim's support, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California introduced legislation in 2017, which intended to make it a federal crime to not report suspected abuse within athletic organizations. The Gymnastics Federation offered sympathy to the victims, but didn't officially apologize. Retton sided with USA Gymnastics and described the environment within the sports as happy and safe. The bill passed, regardless of Retton's testimony and opposition. In 2023, Mary Lou Retton made headlines because of a serious health scare. In October, Retton's daughters took to the internet to share that their mother had been hospitalized. On the crowdsourcing platform SpotFund, McKenna Kelly wrote that her mom was in the ICU and wasn't able to breathe on her own. However, she declined to provide further details out of respect for her family's privacy. While it's certainly shocking to think of Retton in such a vulnerable and precarious position, it was even more shocking to learn that she was uninsured. To cover her medical expenses, her daughter set up an online campaign to raise $50,000. The fundraising effort quickly exceeded its goal thanks to Retton's many concerned fans. However, just as many internet users were put off by what they perceived to be as Retton's choice not to have health insurance, they pointed out that Retton had acquired millions in endorsement deals and speaking fees over the years and currently lives in what many people would consider to be a luxury home. 
In October 2023, Retton's daughters provided an update on Instagram. They said their mother is improving, responding to treatment, and relying on breathing machines less. They also thanked her fans for their love and support. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.